<laughs> um, do you think you a rebound? Because they swear up and down I'm a rebound, Buki. Do you think you're a do you rebound? Think, like, do I think I'm a rebound? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. No, I don't. Because it's just like in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was there for a good time, not a long time. Like I just wanted to Google what is a rebound. A rebound relationship means starting a new relationship before emotionally healing from a recent breakup. Some people may use rebounds to suppress their emotions, get revenge on their ex, or avoid feeling alone. It was a rebound. I feel like it was a rebound. She said, like... She knew Grace was going to act up when she came out with B. She also said she don't like being alone. She don't know how to be alone. So that yeah. helped her not have to worry about being alone. She wasn't emotionally healed from Grams yet. Clearly. So this was a rebound. Yeah. It's like, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, like people want to take words and they want to put their own definition. But it's like it. when you do that, it doesn't allow you to kind of live truthfully and like really grow. What's, What's up, y'all? My name is Nick Rochelle. And I am Carla Rochelle, and we are a married couple. On this channel, we share our genuine reactions to some of the hottest content on YouTube. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you want to join the membership to our channel, become one of our little freaks, hit the join button for exclusive perks. Without further ado, shout out to the members of our channel. All right, so first and foremost, I know it's been a minute. We needed a little break. And, you know, I've been trying to figure out how to kind of, uh, you know, move over to some, move on to, like, some other content. But I guess before we try, we did do a vote in the community section on who y'all wanted us to react to. And y'all toxic. Y'all toxic as hell. I no, guess, just... hey, we are too, because we don't have to react to this shit. But, well, um, no, because the thing is, it's like, if you don't give people what they want. Boy, they would have like, clicked on another video and be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so <laughs> 2,200 people voted and 60%, majority of y'all wanted to see the Lily and B uh, video. So we're going to do it. We're going to give our junior reactions like we always do. Yeah. Um, I already said who we react to, so let's get into it. You ready? Yeah. Before I'm we get a reaction, do us a favor, hit the like button because it helps us grow. Let's Da, 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 da. My special guest of the day is B from Kicking It With B. What up, gang? <laughs> I like your hat. Oh, yeah? Ew, I like my hat, too. Look at my cat. But I hate so <laughs> I, I hate that hat. Oh, man. my gosh. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Y'all, y'all know we had to have some fun to start it oh, off. Oh, okay, the yeah. No, I'm just thinking how, uh, <laughs> Grams was, uh, <laughs> taking her time, sitting down and making them photoshops of them, like, on Beavis and Butthead, and what was the other one you showed It me? was Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. And somebody said she should have had Dumb and Dumber. Dumber. And dumber. dumber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I had yeah. On. <laughs> Because we're about to get into some juicy, juicy questions. So y'all see it. we got the Deleon with the Malibu, you know what I'm saying? I'll be trying to make some drinks up, but this shit look like dirty water for real. Doing her thing, though. I need some grenadine. I'm going to take a bartender, you I just swear my wife. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave mine alone. Okay, I like it. You look nice with me. Thank you, baby. Yeah. What? I said thank you, baby. <laughs> Why she can't say baby? I think the dynamic of their relationship probably didn't change. So meaning at one point it was, baby? Yeah, but I think they probably just didn't went through some shit. I mean, it's been two years, hey. so. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So, y'all, before we get into today's episode, I'm going to open this up with a prayer because y'all know protect I ain't open up about everything with our sister. We wanted something because y'all just was asking questions, the same questions. Over and over. And we wanted like some juicy questions, questions that was going to get us to open up about everything with ourselves, the situation. And y'all just wasn't giving it at first. No. <laughs> they was just asking one thing and they was like determined to ask that one like, thing. Like, yeah. It was killing me. Okay. I haven't seen the questions for real. So... 
<laughs> and it, it's a lot. I you just, want me to just start? We gonna start with the first list? I mean, I didn't put them in order. Okay, well, I'm gonna just start with it, and then y'all know we gonna flow with mm-hmm. it because mm-hmm. it's a podcast. We just here to have a conversation and talk, and our conversations get pretty deep. You know. Yes, it does. Okay, well. The first question on this that you guys ask is, why the fuck she play with you like that? They asking why I play with you like that, because you know word on the street is, I played you. You played me, I'm a rebound, you strung me along, mm-hmm. he's down the third. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? Okay, so... We getting down to it. <laughs> and they jumping right into it. I'm glad they are. <laughs> well, I mean, after the drink making and all that was still. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all don't know the backstory on me and B, should we start with that first? Like how we met? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a video. I don't know which one we talked about it. Oh, the we, mukbang. We talked about it on the mukbang. It's on my channel. I'll have it linked down below. Um, and in that video, we actually told how we met. Yes. Um, it had been some things going around like that. Me. What I didn't like mm-hmm. that was I was saying is that the fact that people were saying that I tried to get at you while you was in a relationship, mm-hmm. and that you was sneaking around with me while you was in a relationship, y'all. I don't follow this girl on Snapchat. And y'all know me. I'm uh, every bit of 17, 18, 19, and 20. I'm not in a relationship. And even if I was, as y'all know that I used to talk about on my vlog and on her vlog, I was a cheater. I mean, we all been there before. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the fact that I was like, oh, what's up? Or I'm trying to get at you. I just used to send emojis. And she never wrote me back. <laughs> I said it, guys. I said, I said, I said, it's funny how I hit her up about a week. I was trying to buy, I had a girlfriend at this time. I was trying to buy my girlfriend a week. And this, <laughs> this motherfucker never opened up none of my Snapchats. <laughs> but it's like, she knew this one was about money. And so she opened it and she gave me the price. And that was the only time we had ever spoke. Mm-hmm. And then it's they keep saying something about when we seen each other in the mall. Okay, um, so honestly, I never even knew that that was Britney's Snapchat. So I didn't know who I was talking to when I replied to her yeah. about the weed. The only time that I ever seen Britney was on Facebook, and I said that I seen her on TikTok, and that was just like a few years before, like when TikTok really got popping. So mm-hmm. that's way after we had seen each other in Forever Twenty One and stuff like that. I mean, so years on down the line. Yes, we never spoke to each other other than that time we ran into each other in the mall, and I was with my ex, and so. I didn't know who I was talking to, but anyway, so <laughs> the question is, um, why do why did why the fuck she play you like that? Yeah, why you play a real nigga like that? So in my mind, honestly, and yes. I had this conversation, I felt like I wasn't doing anything wrong. That's how I felt at that time. Cause as y'all know, yeah. me and Lily are not in a relationship, guys. Yeah. And before you get into that, I just wanna be like it bothers me that a masculine mm-hmm. and a feminine, whether it's a male or a female, mm-hmm. they act like masculine and females can't just be around each other without them trying to place a title on them or mm-hmm. thinking they in a relationship, regardless of whatever mm-hmm. we doing. All right. I don't understand why it's just... I feel like I know why... Hold on, what? You said, <laughs> you said child, so... What? I said child because I'm just thinking about them. It's kind of like how you said, if it look like a duck... <laughs> sound like a duck? It, yeah, then it's a relationship. It's because y'all give off relationship vibes. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily because it's masculine and feminine. Because, I mean, for the longest, I had a feminine best friend where it was never that type of dynamic like we never at one point in time even thought about like going to that level of sex and all that stuff yeah it's just we know a lot of us especially who's been there and done that once you kind of have sex with someone for a long period of time which is again it's been like two years since they've been doing whatever they've been doing behind the scenes and then you start having like little jealous moments and fighting and all that shit it's pretty much like a relationship like you cannot claim it as a relationship but but that's what it's given and it's the yeah. same way how nick said she had a female friend and they were best friends when i first met nick it was like like this stuff that they do, like I, if you say y'all just friends, 
I'm used to that. Like you come over, like say for instance, Nick had a set, her friend would come over or like if we go out of town or something, we go visit her friend or Nick then went out of town to visit her friend. But it was never. She even trees like she. It was never none of this. She's feminine too. You know, none it's like, like we see, we have seen Lily straddle her legs around B, <laughs> B slapping on that big balloon ass, you know, <laughs> and handling it. Like it ain't just a friendship, and and we know once you, it, it's crazy because when I went out with my friends the other day, me and my girlfriends, we were talking about trying to like just kick it with somebody but eventually feelings get involved and even my friend she admitted she said yeah she said like if you keep fucking the same person she was like it could be either weeks or months into it where you start being like okay like but what's really going on yeah i said yeah or it's kind of like it's that question of well what are we doing yeah. or can I see myself with this person in the future? If you have questions like that, that ain't no motherfucking friend. Yeah, that's kind of like when me and Carla, when we first started talking to each other, we both was like, look, I don't want another relationship. I just want to, like, have a good time. So we both was having a good time. But then after, like, about three months, we was just kind of like, all right, what's up? Because we already know, like, after that time, it's like we either need to start trying to understand that we're going to start moving together or start moving apart. Yeah, and I think the very first thing, and I said, I remember this, but you said you don't remember, when you had actually asked me, like, Okay, like I know you said when we started talking, you was talking to somebody else. You was like, are you still talking to that other person? Because once it get to a certain point, you like, I ain't trying to be fucking you and you fucking on somebody else too. It depends on the type of person that you are. But me and Nick, we just don't move like that. Yeah. Uh, they did that. One... When me going through the breakup publicly, excuse me, y'all. When me going through the breakup publicly and then us, we came online like kissing, dancing, flirting, you know, <laughs> doing all this. Like we was like yeah. pranking each other, sending me yeah. flowers. So I know like, okay, you are dating me. Yeah. However, along the lines, it was like, okay, I knew I had healing still to do. Mm -hmm. We we talk heavily. We talk deeply about our stuff, but... um. I just feel like they saying you see a duck, it look like a duck, it walk like a duck. It's gonna quack like a duck. <laughs> no, I said if it look like a duck, if it sound like a duck, it's a motherfucking relationship. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, y'all in a relationship. Y'all yeah. in a relationship. Y'all say it or not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, so I, I understand it. it is. Um, so anyways, in my mind, I feel like I wasn't doing anything wrong. However, I knew that I was... I knew we had feelings for each other and I knew that I wanted to be 100% honest with her. However, I couldn't and I couldn't because of situations that me and her were going through and it was still based on how I felt. So that's not to say that I was right because I still feel like I was right. I should have went with my first um, initial thought, which was to tell you right then and there when everything was going on. However, we had went through a whole lot of stuff before that and I know they want to get into that. You want to talk about it? Well, let's see. What's up? Let's talk about let's it. Let's talk about it. Let's clear some stuff up. Okay, so they saying basically that we in a domestic ass relationship you know, that I sent you to jail for domestic violence. Now, this is way before my ex came along, y'all. This is in February. Yes. And this was something that we was going through. We don't take it lightly. No. <laughs> it was definitely a crazy... She said this was before her ex came. Yeah, so the second time that, like, Grams came through, which was, like, around, what she say, March of this year. Oh, but that so uh, not... mug shot that we're seeing floating around, I think, was that, like, February of last year? Yeah. Some shit like that. I was just thinking about, she said uh, her ex originally contacted her in December. Yeah. So, so but she's but saying yeah. she wasn't, like, actively talking to her during this time? I guess, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Crazy situation, but I'm gonna let Brittany tell her situation. Yes. So at this time, I was going through a lot of personal things in my life, and my emotions was all over the place. I didn't know how to face them. I didn't know how to like just handle them. And so, like, 
in the midst of me going through all these emotions and stuff like that, um, I was looking for my vape. <laughs> so, Damn. <laughs> I was looking for my vape. And so, you know, I'm searching up and down Lily House, the bed, the living room, everywhere, places I don't even be at. Mm-hmm. And so I went to the car. Mm-hmm. Now and tell the, my job when she went to the car. I was just getting. I was home. Home. Yeah. Okay. We, I went to the car right before all this happened. She had just came back from a little girl's out in, mm-hmm. in or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to the car. I'm looking for my vape. <laughs> in the midst of me looking for my vape, I seen another vape. Yeah. It was like a little weed pen. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> So y'all know when you going through, <laughs> so y'all know y'all already got stuff already built up in you. All it takes is one thing. Mm-hmm. And so when I seen that vape, it was like, boom. And so I just, so it was like, oh, you a liar. Oh, you, you lying, lying to me now? Cause we be honest. We be honest. You tell me everything. I tell you everything. So you lying to me now? You got a motherfucker in your cot with a bait. Yeah. And this is again, why we say it was a relationship. Because if it's not a relationship, it don't matter who's in your car. Like, during them first three months of me and Carla just messing around with each other, it wouldn't matter who was in her car, who was in her house. None of that matter because yeah. we're not in a relationship. But then after a while, when I get to a point where I'm, like, questioning, like, who the fuck was in your car? It's a relationship. Uh, why your seat leaning Or at least you need to go ahead and establish <laughs> if it's a relationship or not so you don't have these moments mm-hmm. where you then can be like, bitch, I'm single. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only my base need to be lost in that car. <laughs> so I came back in the I came back into the bedroom. I'm like, you know, asking about this vape, this, that, and the third. I tell her, I don't know who vape this is, y'all. This shit was so weird, and I have to make a reference real quick because. I did not know who vape this was. The only thing I'm like, it has to be valet, and y'all. Years before this, three years ago, when I was going through this whole breakup thing with my ex, a situation like that happened. I thought that was crazy. I got in the car. Me and my ex was going out to eat, and there was a vape pen in the car. At that time, we didn't even know what that was or the e-cigarette or whatever. And this person was looking at me like, you had somebody in the car, but it was the dude who changed the tire vape. So mm-hmm. this is how y'all people with them vapes be getting in shit, putting that vape down, then lose the damn yes, vape. Now you search for the vape. It's so easy. It's okay. so easy. I'm going to let you continue. <laughs> so... I go confront her about the vape or whatever. She telling me it's not nobody's vape, this, that, and the third. And so I ain't trying to hear none of that. At this point, I done just like, fuck everybody. Everybody, that, the shit that I'm going through, like I'm just so emotional right now. So I'm just getting loud. I'm getting very loud. I'm emotional. I'm getting real loud. And <laughs> this motherfucker <laughs> was telling me to get out. And so, yeah, because I'm like, okay, B. You know, she had been drinking. It looked like I was like drinking lemon drops. I would never ever she drink was making lemon the, drops. We made the lemon drops here at the house, and so I'm out, and she was drinking the lemon yes, drops. I up. was feeling so good. Now the lemon drops they get you right, but yes. oh, <laughs> that yeah, clear like give me clear. <laughs> <laughs> get you clear. <laughs> that clear give me clear. Y'all, right? I'm like, okay, you need to calm down. Mind you, this girl is a Scorpio. Yes, and y'all know we ain't got no click off with No, it. and I, at that time I'm like, okay, you're triggering me. We done had, ooh, we can have so many different conversations. It's crazy, but yes. it's like you're triggering me. You trying to bring out a part of me that I left a long time ago. I'm telling you the truth. I'm being honest with you and you steady pushing my buttons. Right. So we need to bring this down. She not having it. She not listening to me. It's oh, like she- I can see how that could be an issue. Like if you um, okay, we're just going to use the term dating even if they not. So if you dating somebody and you find something in their car that you know don't belong to them and it don't belong to you and then they're telling you i don't know 
then you feel like they playing in your face. Yeah. They lying. So I can Especially see... if you've caught them in a lie before. I'm not saying she have ever caught Lily in a lie, but if she did, that's another thing too. Because yeah. they feel like you're playing in my face. That's what I was going to say. I can see how it escalated. Yeah. Because me, when she said about a Scorpio, y'all, yeah, because my dad is a Scorpio and he can be a plum fool. So that's why when she said he don't have a click, she don't have, you know, they don't have a click off button. Except for my daddy, he was born November 5th. So, um, I can see, like, even me, especially if you a hothead, you be like, you must think I'm motherfucking crazy. Yeah, and, like, all Scorpios, I don't think like that. Like, I have, I, I track some Scorpios. They tend to be, like, friends for me. Mm -hmm. um, they be the bubbly ones. But, again, I got them in my family. My grandma and my uncle. My uncle, my daddy is too, but my uncle, he's one. And it almost feel like you're walking on eggshells with him because you never know when he just, like, something just going to tick him off. Yeah, see, like, my dad, he cool like me. Yeah, but then when he one. get... I mean, my daddy the bubbly one. Yeah, but when he get escalated, I've never though, seen my daddy like it's that. Like, but it I heard can, my daddy kill somebody, though. Yeah, it's like, it, <laughs> can, it can go there real fast. So I can understand this. The only thing I'm worried about is who the fuck vape this. Yes. So <laughs> we into no it. We into it real, real bad or whatever. I'm like, Brittany, I got neighbors. Um, Cause I'm hollering. She hollering. I know it, it just sounded like it crazy. Was bad and I was, I didn't leave. And she didn't leave. So I was like, I'm going to call the police. And she called the police. I called 911. Hey, I ain't even know black girls call police on, uh, on partners, I, cause again, y'all y'all heard the story when I said when I got locked up, but that was from like a white girl calling the cops on me, and we in Alabama, so you already know, and I had put my hands on it, so you already know, like, like but I didn't take, know black girls. I mean, I guess it, I, don't, I guess it happened. It would take a lot for me to call. Yeah, the cause these motherfuckers don't play; they'll take your ass in. Yeah, like. What? Why are you looking like that? I'm just like, it would have to take for us to been got physical but, with okay, each Okay, I want y'all to comment below. Like, what do y'all think? Do y'all think, like, how much would it take for you to call? Because I don't, we don't have a lot of shit to happen to us. And that's another thing I want to say, too. Like, a lot of people, when they watch these reactions and we share our genuine, honest opinions, they be like, oh, y'all are coming off judging like y'all are perfect. When it's really not coming from uh, the point of being perfect, it's really coming from the fact that we've been through like a lot of this shit worse shit guns pulled out on us knives pulled out on us going to jail over this shit so when we share our honest opinion it's really in hopes of just showing like this shit ain't nothing to play with you can lose your life playing with this shit mm -hmm. and it's like we don't want other people to fall into the same traps or same mistakes so if we see toxic shit we have to call it out because we've been there not because we feel like we're perfect yeah but I, I wasn't calling 911 to arrest to arrest her. Was trying to man, please, girl, you it don't take much. Somebody can lose their fucking life. Man, the girl only had a few little marks on her. They took my. Well, I had a warrant on me, so no. I really was trying you to scare her to, to get. Still would have went to jail because it's domestic jail. violence. Yes, and then. Thankfully, like the shit played out the way it did because that shit could be on my record. Have y'all ever tried to get a job with just domestic violence pending on your record? Sure. That shit, you can't get no job for real. For, not no decent job. Mm -hmm. I had to go to a fast food restaurant after being a manager at like a call center. I couldn't get nothing but like a fast food job. Shit it hurt to leave. Excuse me, yes. And so when the police arrived, it was two males and... Of course, I went to the bathroom. I'm drunk. I'm trying to, you know, calm myself down, try to sober up because the police is now here. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I may be drunk, but I ain't stupid. Yeah. And so I went into the bathroom. The light is off. The door is closed and locked. And so the police come in. They asked me, they asked me, like, what's going on? I was like, y'all, she just under the influence. It's all good. Like, it's fine. I just really wanted her to get quiet. They was like, okay, so everything good? I'm like, yeah. They was like, well, do you mind if we talk to her? I was like, no, I don't mind. Y'all, yeah. I, he literally go back there. It was literally like a one, two, three. It yes. had, it was literally two seconds. I hear him knock on the door and he asked if he could like talk to her. He said, she, he said, I want to talk to you. Can you come out the bathroom? I'm going to count to three. That's what he said. Yes. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to cut the light on to let you know I'm about to come out. And it's like, soon as I said, okay, the man started like, trying to break down her bathroom door. See, that's another thing too that I don't like. Sometimes like when you dealing with certain men, especially as a masculine presenting woman, 
um, especially if you're more on the masculine side, um, it's like sometimes you'll have a power struggle. Sometimes you have men that just don't like you just because. Because it's crazy how Carla and her, when she was with a guy at one time, they had a situation where the cops came out. Did they take him to fucking jail? Did they pull him out? No, they tried to talk to y'all and you had to even let them know like, y'all- If you leave this house, you gonna be back. So you need to stay here till I get my shit. But it's interesting how quick they'll pull, like even me, I went to jail and I was a bit more masculine at that time too. Like I'm kind of toning it down cause I'm more, you know, comfortable with my femininity and masculinity. I don't feel like I have to show as much. But um, at that time I was just really, if y'all see the mugshot ever, then y'all see. But um, it's like they took me to jail quick. And then even with uh, her, it, like the, the fact that they got her mug shot. Yeah, but so the thing is when she says she, they don't even know how big B is at this point. So they, it's like police, they already had a guard up, y'all. That's how come a lot of oh, times- Oh, they didn't get to see her yet? Yeah, cause she locked in the door. So they don't know how big this person might be behind the door. But then not only that, I guess the other part of me, the reason it don't make sense is you tell her B to leave. We already know she's intoxicated. So if you call the police, she can't fucking leave anyway. Were they both intoxicated though? Probably. Maybe I she mean, wasn't thinking straight. Well, Lily had said she wasn't there and B was still there drinking while she was gone. So I guess it just don't make sense to me because you telling her to leave. Why are you telling her to leave if she intoxicated? Which I don't, I know people drive, you know, when they drinking or whatever. But why call the police? Because you know the police ain't going to make her leave while so she's intoxicated. So another question. If you were in this situation where this girl is acting up, who knows how bad she could have potentially been acting up, how the fuck you get her out your house? What huh? if you really want her ass to go? Like, how do you get rid of her? So this is it. So I don't know at what point, like, why Lily? I know it's Lily's house. So, but my thing is, was her kids there? Could she have not left? I don't know. Comment below your thoughts. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Ugh, it's just ugly because yeah, because when I you get the cops involved, you start getting records and shit. Like, yeah, I'm just record. thinking she can't. When the police get there, that's how come she said, "I just want her to be quiet." In certain places, you can't even stay now if you have like some on your record. So that's why she didn't say, "I want her to leave my house," because she knows she's drunk to the point she can't leave her house. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Comment below. Yeah. And so at this point, he jammed the door. Like at this point, I'm not, I, I, I'm like, I'm drunk. So I'm like, I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, sir, I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get out. But you just jammed the door. And he's steady trying to knock the door down, knock the door down. So she, he, he bust through there. By then, I'm in there. He bust through the door. He go in, he just charge at her. Like, yeah, because I'm like, at this point, it's either going to be you or it's going to be me. And I ain't going out like, I ain't yeah. going out without no fight because it's like, why is you coming at me aggressive like this? So y'all, my my trash can got broke. The shit getting knocked off the wall. It's two big ass police officers on top of her ass, which was another trigger for me. And so it was, I was like, stop, stop. Like I'm yelling. So y'all, boom, he like yank her so hard. Damn near, he was on her back about to break her arm. They get her in the handcuffs. They get her outside. I'm like, you need to let her go. Like, y'all that came here and caused more problems than was already going right. on. That shit was crazy. And I got how they was looking at me. They looking at me like I'm I'm better. You know, I'm, I'm in here getting abused or some shit. So they <laughs> like, thinking I'm scared. It wasn't even the case. So I cussed him out. All this, this nigga, I, he was like, see, she causing a, a ruckus out here. I'm like, no, sir. If you anybody caused a ruckus. Ten cops. Twelve. It was, it cops, was so many cops the out street. there for what? And you charging me for disorderly conduct? I'm yeah. not disturbing nobody. You is. It's nighttime and the whole block full of blue lights. So, so like, let's just let this be a lesson to the couples out there. Unless you just really need to, like, the cops to be involved, like, don't just call them if you're just thinking like, oh, I just want them to come out to just calm her down. No, it don't work like that. If they come out, especially with lesbian couples in the South, nine times out of 10, one of y'all or both are going to jail, nine times out of 10. And that's just from my, just speaking from experience, somebody going to jail. And you better not have none on your record or you're gonna be in that motherfucker. I was in there 30 days, they tried to give me 60. 
life just changed like overnight. Oh, then he was like, awesome I said, you ain't even told her what she's charged for. You need to let her out that car. He starts trying to tell me what he charged her. But I was like, you just need to let her out that car. He gets an attitude and tells me, well, you just don't need to call the police again. He gets mm -hmm. in the car, drive off with this girl. So the other cops come, they turn around in unison and they walk off. So then there was two cops up here by my door. I run in because I'm thinking I got to go chase the damn car because I'm we in the South. I don't know what these cops gonna do with her. You Bro, know what I'm telling the way that man, like, okay. how he started handling the whole situation. I did. I swear to God, I didn't know where I was going at first. So, boom. So, they come in like, you gonna sign this paper? I'm like, I'm not signing no shit. I never pressed any charges. There, you, you never seen my name on anything. I never filed anything. No. So, boom, that's how that whole shit happened. She ended up being in jail, though. I had I, we had in my family we have us a um a bondsman on call <laughs> and so like Damn. it's like as soon as I got booked and everything I was bonded out mm -hmm. but I didn't I'm in jail I didn't know what the fuck I was um charged for or nothing so I'm thinking okay I'm on the phone like man I just posted the bed I'm finna get out this that and the third I go show some man my paper and he was like yeah to, in the morning when you get out this that I'm like in the morning yeah. I said my, my, my bail is posted like mm -hmm. he's like no you've been charged with domestic violence you gotta stay I think it's like 12, 12 hours, hours. Mm -hmm. I said I don't know you fucking lying and for a person with no priors like none of that like this is like it was so crazy y'all like yeah. <laughs> It, it was a lie. I was in. Hey, it's cool. Well, Go in there, play you some spades, and let one of them braid your hair. That's what I did. Well, um, <laughs> if she wanted off her record, what got to happen? Well, I just know in my situation, again, the girl I was dealing with, she didn't press charges. She didn't even show up to court. Um, so it's like they, the, 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 the uh, whoever the, was it the public? It, what is it called? The public defender. defender. She, uh, well, she wouldn't worth shit. However, it still worked out, but she talked to the judge and we was like, look, the second time around, she, she didn't show up. Can we just drop this off her uh, record? And the lady, the, the mean judge who usually don't play about domestic violence shit, she, boy, I was praying on my knees and everything. <laughs> it's crazy how people start praying when they feel like they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she dropped it off my record. So maybe it won't get on her record if the judge drop it if Lily show up maybe and say like I don't want to press charges. Mm -hmm. But just it all still depends on the judge too. I would just say Lily ass don't need to show up. <laughs> or it may actually help if she show up and like be like uh I don't want to press charges. Comment below y'all thoughts on what y'all think is the best way to I go about it. I wonder what would happen. But having if domestic she do that. violence on your record is just not cool it's not a good thing it's, it's hard not. to move especially when you want to live in certain areas if you want to have certain jobs it's just like it's i didn't realize how much how difficult it'll be just with it pending yeah because now you can sometimes you can move somewhere and they pull a background check yeah yeah and when i tell you i was in that jail cell in so much pain because it was like that police officer mm -hmm. she had to go to the i had to go bar. to the hospital as soon as i get out i had got out and was in a case okay oh lord but we can we can talk about but that to clear that up yes that's what happened nobody sent nobody to jail because some but it's crazy because i remember when i first seen the mugshot i was thinking because it was so early like in their like involvement with each other I thought it was with like another girl. I was like, oh, maybe another girl mad that she messed with Lily or something. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, I remember that came out a long time ago. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. I've never ever put my hands on this woman. No, she's never. never. <laughs> no, ever. I think that's like, like okay, if you guys are spiritual, then you understand like the Brittany, consequences. The consequences one, but Brittany was also sent in my life for a purpose, right? And I know that, and I know that so, she is a soulmate of mine, and that she had a mission, mm -hmm. and I had a mission in her life, and I feel like we mm -hmm. are fulfilling that mission, yeah, right? We challenge each other in a lot of ways, we trigger each other in a lot of ways, and I think that's why our friendship has to be built. Over time. over time you know what I'm saying yeah. but we also are healing to each other in a lot of ways and and I love that about Brittany yeah. so I'm gonna go ahead 
And um, I hope that answered y'all question though. Like as far as the first question was, why the fuck she play with you like that? I felt like I didn't play with her, but in all actuality, I could see how she could it feel may look like that. Yes. So okay, somebody said only fans. That was killing me. <laughs> what they they want us to do? They want things? us to make our only fans so bad. I don't. I'm tired of seeing people stinky, funky, salva pussy. Especially after seeing Big Sexy Red and that part that, Wait, yes. Why you say big? Because I just had to it say that. Little. And look, yes, I watched the video. I did. Both of them. Both of them. And I didn't even know <laughs> it was a second one until she went out with her girls and then they was describing the style. I was like, what? Y'all, she was. What's that right there? She was like, what's that right there? And he was like, a herpes. And then he started <laughs> licking it. I was like, you know what? At this point, I'm tired of seeing y'all pom pom. I'm tired of seeing y'all booty. I'm tired of it. I don't want to see it. Like every time, do we? What you think that'll be like? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this, but that's the quickest way to get rich. Oh, my well, God. Us, when it... Please don't. You ain't, uh, what's her name? Bad baby. Nah. Please don't, y'all. Just don't. It seemed like it. And then I think some people start getting thirsty for money and they start doing stuff they wouldn't normally do. And you just got to remember people out here screen recording your shit. You don't know what you want to do later on in life. We already going to have to deal with AI doing that at one point. At one point, they're going to be able to have us looking like we uh, doing that and we ain't. Mm hmm. It kind of us. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we'll. we'll. Hey, we'll turn OnlyFans up. Okay. I mean, if they did the OnlyFans, I probably watch just out of curiosity. But I still don't think they should do it. I don't think they should do it. So, for sure. <laughs> okay, we might consider that. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so how do you feel about everything that happened between Grams and Lily? He's asking you. How do you feel about everything that happened between me and Grams? How do I feel? I'm gonna just keep it a buck with y'all. When I first met Lily, I'm spiritual. I knew what was up. I knew that the situation that happened was gonna happen. I knew that eventually they was gonna come together, rekindle, and give it another shot, this, that, and the third. So it's just like, I really, if we being honest, I'm just disappointed in Lily. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling her like, I feel like you that best friend in high school that I got to protect because along the time we've been together, I've, I've heard stories, I've seen things, and we've been through things, and I was just like, this motherfucker got her. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like, mm -hmm. I used to always tell her, like, if this motherfucker thinks she finna come back into your life, she got to do this, she got to do that, she got this down the third, nigga. She, I used to talk shit like, she got to come see me. Because mm -hmm. as a Scorpio, and I'm not even just going to use a Zodiac sign, as a as a person like me, once I get connected to you and I look at you as a, a, a friend, I'm overprotective. And so it was times I've seen this woman cry. I've cried with this woman. I felt this woman. Um, I've been through a lot with this woman. It was just like, no. Mm -hmm. No, and it's like I always knew that she was gonna fall for certain things if this person came back around. So it was just like, uh, uh, baby. Mm -hmm. But overall, some things I didn't appreciate. Mm -hmm. The only thing, the only thing that I didn't like about this whole situation is that when I was in a certain place in my life, it was kind of being told I don't I don't think she would like talk shit about me or talk down on me but that was a familiar person they were like best friends so it's like if we are already going through our shit mm -hmm. of course certain things are going to be said mm -hmm. so I just feel like I felt that you know our bond I'm not even gonna say bond. I you just, just felt betrayed. I just felt betrayed in a certain way. Like I don't give a fuck about anything else, but to tell a person certain things that I'm going through, mm -hmm. that's the only thing I didn't like. But everything else, I prepared myself for. It. And for y'all to be like, well, you don't feel bad for me, or why am I staying around this long, or this, that, and the third? It's just like you know certain people people to keep into your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like. 
Yes, in the beginning, I caught feelings. But like I told you, I know how to, like, control them and place them in certain places. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, even though I like this person, this nothing's going I don't want a relationship. She don't want one. Neither one of us is ready to be committed in a relationship. But I didn't want her out of my life because, if you're being honest, I learned a lot from her. Mm -hmm. We have a good connection. We have fun together. And she's done helped me on my journey so it's just like overall i knew what to expect i mm -hmm. just didn't like how it went down i wish my nigga was just a little more stronger yeah, you know I what i'm saying like, but i apologize to you about that because you know i don't play about that and yes. i don't want to get emotional but it's just like i never intended for you to feel betrayed okay. like you know and i've never intended for you to feel like I was talking down on you. Yes. And I think, you know, we, oh gosh. It's okay. Because you know, even just hearing you talk about it, it's just like, it literally makes me emotional because it was I up. don't want to hurt you. <laughs> and I never intended to hurt you. Like I said, I know. Or be hurt. I know your attention was. Shit, hold on, yo. Okay. I had to grab some napkins. So, I feel like, um, we was talking earlier we was talking about addictions yes and um <laughs> i feel like we were talking about that in depth or oh, uh, like on on your channel oh, yes but um because that's her story but with me i grew up in an addictive uh yeah an addictive household like everybody in my family pretty much suffered from addictions besides like my brother and my sister <laughs> um, so like growing up in a household where you come from people who were on drugs, who abuse alcohol, you know, I tried to do the opposite of that. And mm -hmm. I realized though, and I've talked about it on my channel a lot, if you follow Life Lily, um, I get addicted to people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very hard. I get addicted to things yes. too. Cause That's interesting. I don't know if I've never even heard of that, but... Based off how she's been kind of moving with grams, it does seem like some sort of addiction. You know, like you think she didn't drop it, but then one little thing make her have like a relapse. I've never heard of someone being addicted to people, but if I had to see or choose what it looked like, it seemed like it would look like something like that. Yeah, I wonder, is she addicted to people or like Graham said, she addicted to toxicity? Could be that too. Yeah. Could be that too. Yeah. That aspect of the person. Yeah. Could because even, um, yeah. You know, it's interesting because um, I've shared this before. I grew up with addicts in my family, and I do the opposite. I still fucking clear when I see those warning signs. If you are alcoholic, I still clear. Especially if you... Like, you can drink a lot. Like, don't get me wrong. If you start acting out of character, I'm not going to fuck with you no more. You got one time to act out of character, like, drinking around me. And then um, I had drug addicts in my family, and I still clear of that, too. Like, so, you know, they say that that happens. It's either that you're going to run from it or you're going to still have it in your life. So they say it's either one of the two. Interesting. Like, if you come to my house, you probably call me a hoarder. Um, yeah, I get addicted. And it's crazy because my mom, I'm not saying she's a hoarder, but she got she some hoarder activity. She loves to buy stuff. Yeah. She got some hoarder activity, <laughs> but if y'all check out, like, the way me and Carla live, we are minimalists. Like, because your mom was like that, too. Yeah. Or she is like that. Yeah. And we, if you look at how our shit tend to be in our house, it's just like... I don't know. It just to some people may think it look freaky, but that's just how we are. Yeah. <laughs> to things and my ex was a very big addiction for me. And so I think other people have this same addiction when it comes to relationships. But mm -hmm. if you look at it like that, it's like, you know, for two years I was in rehab. Mm -hmm. I was in cherry <laughs> labs. And it's like I relapsed mm -hmm. and it's like, ooh, you know, you go my drug again. That go my drug again. I gotta be strong. I gotta be able to say no. Mm -hmm. I gotta be able to look at all the work I'm gonna put in and go the other way. But if you just take one hit, it's, it's like old. it's over with, right? Old. And so I, you know, therapy was helping me with that, and 
I feel like I'm just learning so much just going through that. But um, I needed that because I needed to, I needed this situation. Not mm. saying I, I'm happy and happy. I just feel like I learned so much, y'all. And it just opened my eyes up to so much. And I feel like those rose tinted glasses, like, came off. Yeah, you know? Because, because I just don't like the fact that people think what you did isn't normal. Yeah, because I can sit up here and say I did the same fucking thing. Like, who don't run back to a familiar person, mm-hmm. a ex, regardless of what they did? I'm mm-hmm. just keep it a book. Mm-hmm. My ex. It's like, I don't like when people try to, um, like, make excuses for their behavior. And maybe it is a lot of people that run back to their exes. But I know some people that's been in toxic shit and they didn't run back. Me, myself, like if something is just too fucking toxic and it's like, this is not something I want to deal with, then I'm not going to run back. I mean, I don't... I've actually never really seen it like this until I watch her because I guess all the women in my family, they just made us just be like, you don't need that nigga or whatever. Like you don't, they, they just brought me up to be like that. So if I felt like someone wasn't treating me the way I feel like I'm worth, like I never had an issue with leaving. Um, and I remember the first time I got my heart broken, y'all, this shit was in high school. But when it happened and I couldn't eat for two weeks and I was all depressed and all that, and when we moved back to St. Louis, I made a vow to myself in high school. I said I will never let someone get to me where I feel like I'm losing myself and I got to like keep going back to them and be in that type of situation. So from high school up, that's just what type of person I've been. So again, when we see this shit on camera, like it's not normal. If it is normal, I mean, I I guess I didn't know so many people were doing it. No, I think the thing is maybe it is a lot of people that's doing it and they don't realize that, you know, some of the things that they're doing can be considered toxic. You know, if they're in relationships. But that's why me and Nick do the things that we do. That's why we point out a lot of the shit that we point out. Like, don't get me wrong. When I was growing up, I witnessed family members staying with people that they shouldn't have stayed with. But they stayed with them. And it was kind of like... My mama never been like that. It was kind of like... People used to talk about them on the side. Like, I don't know why she with that no good ass nigga. You know, it would be like people talking about them. So it was kind of highlighted. And who knows? Maybe that's where I get it from. You know, because I always grew up thinking everybody was a cheater. That I didn't trust anybody. But then I learned that that's not true. But that was my own belief. Nobody put that in me. It was me watching people around me, watching the men around me, watching how the women move. And I came to that conclusion for myself. So like in my mind, this shit is not normal. Like I'm not used to seeing, I'm just thinking about all the women in my family. Like they're not like that. They don't move like that. I mean, yeah, they, no, they're not single. My mama finally got a husband after the plethora of men that she's dated and fucking left when they wasn't treating her the way she wanted to be treated. I'm just thinking about all the women. They're not like that. Yeah. So, um, but another thing too, I noticed, it seemed like I hear like even in the music and shit, they tend to romanticize toxicity. Yeah. Like, you know. And like, they listen to a lot of that shit. And I don't. Yeah. But, uh, but I just, and so that's why again, when I see this shit, I just call it out. So when she was done with uh, Grams, and again, I wasn't following their cycles throughout the years. So when all that shit, that fucked up shit happened, I'm thinking, okay, this girl is done. She's good. So when they like, oh, it's normal for people to go back. In my world, it's not normal. Not when it's bad like that. Especially when it's bad like that. Yeah. Yeah. Comment below your thoughts. Cheated on me multiple times. And what I do? Every time that motherfucker wanted to come back to my house, what I do? I opened up that door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but why? That means that it's something that's in you. It's the same way how Lily have admitted that she don't want to be alone. That means that it's something, either it's some type of insecurity or maybe B don't want to be alone either, but it's still something there. And a lot of times, you know how they say we need to go back and we need to look into our childhood. And a lot of times, some of the things that we do, it stems from some shit in our childhood. Like, just because you did it, don't make it fucking right, y'all. Just because they're doing it, 
it don't make it right. Yeah, the like, reason- you can go back to the wrong motherfucker and lose your life. That's almost what happened to my daddy's sister. Yeah, yeah. And she, actually, she didn't leave him. And just, Her husband used to have this thing where he would leave the house and do whatever he wanted to do and came back home drunk one night and almost killed her ass. Yeah. And just think, too, also, it's like when you constantly going back with this toxic person that you may be wasting time with, in my opinion, it's like you can be missing out on, like, the right person for you. You can miss out on taking that time to heal because both me and Carla, right before we got with each other, Carla was in a real toxic relationship, and then I was in a, uh, I wouldn't call it toxic. I would, I just say we were young, and the girl just needed more time to, like, she experience. was. Experience. Yeah, she so to experience. I even offered, let's do an open relationship, because she was living in another state. She moved to another state for her reason, and I stayed here. So we did the open relationship. The only thing I didn't like was the lying, like, if I felt like I couldn't trust you. And so when I was able to back her into a corner and understand, okay, she's going to lie to me, then I was just like, you know what? I'm good. And I dismissed myself. And it felt like a weight was lifted off. I was like, dang, look, I can now, uh, I can focus on myself even more. I can, like, get my house together even more. I can just relax and I ain't got to worry about shit because I know I'm a good catch and I know it's plenty of women out there. Like, yeah, be for real. Like, imagine being in a relationship for years. And then you finally get to just kind of breathe and move on. Like, it's so much more out there. Yeah, but I think that's the thing <laughs> that people are not That's doing. what I be. I be like, man, it's so, like, even with Carla, like, I think me and Carla don't play with each other because we already know. Like, if we fuck up, that's it. Like, I'm even yeah. thinking I can move on. She can move on. Yeah. But what I was going to We've been with say... each other for nine years. It's like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, what I was going to say is I think that's where a lot of people, um, where they miss it. They miss the mark. Not taking that time to be with themselves yes, and love yourself. Y'all, no lie, when I did that, when I was like, fuck this shit. And I was actually thinking about everything that I had been through. And I prayed about it. And I actually told God, like, I am a good person. I deserve somebody to do to do good by me. And I was like, you said, if I ask, you will give it to me. I was like, do I not deserve it? Yeah, I was crying and everything, praying to God. And got to the point where I was like, you know what? Like, yep. I don't need to be with anybody. And then I started doing things for myself. Yep. I would go out. I would go shopping. And it's like when you be to yourself yep. and you realize... And I had ain't a nobody, moment. and I said this before, ain't nobody going to show up for me like, I'm going to show up for me. Like, say for instance, if something goes wrong and I need some money or I need to figure some shit out, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, can somebody else do it? They might do it, but I don't want to owe your ass nothing. Yeah, and it's like I had a similar moment, and then eventually me and Carla just showed up in each other's life, and we're here. And another thing, too, like we still have moments of alone time. Like we're here on home time now, just chilling at home. Me and Carla, we just been spending time with ourselves. Like I've been taking myself out, taking myself shopping, you know, just enjoying myself. So we still do that even though we're married. Yeah. When you love a person a certain way, not saying that I've never experienced your type of love, because I tell her all the time, like, <laughs> the way you love this woman, I just wish that I can experience that because for so long I was the type of person that just was searching for love. You know what I'm saying? But my ex taught me that no matter yeah. how hard you try to find it, you're not going to find it until you actually love yourself and just. And that's, again, that's what me and Carla had to do. We had to have those moments where we loved Mm ourselves. We was pouring so much into ourselves, enjoying being by ourselves, that eventually we just randomly popped up in each other's life. And then here we are nine years later. I know, because I used to do that. That's the secret. I used to be in relationships, and I used to be like, this motherfucker don't love me. I would be looking at the stuff that they would do. We'll see the red flags up front. Or how they would talk to me or just stand out whenever they wanted to, not coming fucking home. And I was just like, I don't feel love. Yeah, so take some time. And it ain't nobody else. It ain't nobody else 
that's not on anybody else to love you. It's on you to love yourself. Cause guess what? If I would have loved myself, them same motherfuckers who were staying out all night, not coming home, cheating or doing all that shit, I'd have been like, your ass got to go. And see the thing too, also with me and Carla, we love on ourselves, still in our marriage so much that if something weird happened where I flipped the switch or Carla flipped the switch, we still can love on each other. Not saying it won't hurt, but I'm just saying we yeah. love each other enough to not accept like disrespect or toxicity. Exactly. So you gotta love yourself first. Pour into yourself. To allow that love to come in. So it's just like the way people are making it seem like you're dumb. You was just down the. It's just like, bro, be fucking for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like who don't run back to their nigga, their baby daddy, their baby mama, mm -hmm. or it, like be for real. Mm -hmm. It happens to the best of us, but I really do feel like she learned the lesson this time because it's just like if you don't get it god gonna make you get it and that's why i feel like this whole situation had to happen because it's yeah. just certain things you can't come back from you know what i'm yeah. saying so and i think i was uh, i don't know if this answers some of the questions but we just talking at this point i think i was in a sense of like I think Brittany needs to hear from me that I had like a sense of hope. Like we could feel it. I would talk about it, but I never, I had these things that I kept saying that if my ex came back, I, she would have to do this, 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 yes. this, and this. And then when that actually happened, I didn't stand on none of those things. And it started to happen over time because once I was talking to her and we was communicating, I started to see like the same things. And she started to point out things with me, and I'm like, well, shit, maybe I'm acting like this because I'm familiar with you the same way she's saying that I'm being this way because I'm familiar with this. I just got it. It took, you know, it took me into a whirlwind of confusion. Mm -hmm. And we all know that confusion is not of God. Confusion is straight from the devil. If you're confused about anything in your life, you know that it's not God sending you that. You know what I'm saying? Because God sends you clarity. God sends you I guess I'm, I guess I'm not like a religious person. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to get into that. I'm not going to get into it. Discernment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's that with that. We can go on and on about that. And if y'all want us to talk more in depth about it, or you got any questions. Um, because at the end, of, because some, at some point you actually can look at, let's say, for example, when you say, oh, God, don't send confusion or this and that. Sometimes, let's say you need confusion or you need some of these negative, what people may perceive as negative um, experiences so you can what learn about yourself, so you can grow. How can you grow if you don't experience contrast? So, you know, people say, oh, it's of the devil. Why can't it all just be of that one Lying, powerful yeah. source yeah. that creates everything so that we can grow, so that we can, like, all the negative experiences that I've experienced in my past, I'm not, I can't blame it on, like, say, the devil. I just blame it on, this is a, a way of allowing me to grow and become, like, this person that I am today. So, I don't know. Comment below your thoughts on that, too. Um, that you would like to hear us talk about, like, on uh, future episodes. Leave them down below. Yes. But I hope that pretty much covered that part for you. So, the next question is, um, they, I think this is, this kind of can be two questions because it says, do you see a real future with me? And then it's like, do you trust Lily after what happened? So you want to go first? Do I see a real future with you? And mm -hmm. do I trust you? Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like as far as like, do I see a real future with you? I feel like the hard work is over for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Meaning like, that hope you was having these past two years, mm -hmm. you got to try it out, and it failed, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's like now you can officially tap into yourself, move on, get right, heal yourself, and, you know, go on a different path. And if, like, our path, like, meets, of mm -hmm. course, I would love to be with you. Like, the hard part is literally over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they understand what we mean by that. I don't know, but... but it's, it's the been, hard part. It's been a time. It's been a while. When ride. she said she done been here with me, I done been been her. crying yes. and crying with me. And with both of us being very spiritual and very spiritually and tapped I, in. Yes, and that's what thing. I want to kick on before I answer that question. Okay. 
I'm very spiritual. I've I, I seen comments. I'm not even gonna hold y'all that um, when Lily did her true video, and she was basically telling y'all that I felt her every time she talked to her ex, or I felt her every time anytime her ex popped up. No, mm -hmm. that was and y'all y'all said that I, I got cameras on this girl. <laughs> Be fucking for real. <laughs> it's never that serious. I'm just very. It's a gift that I I'm, I'm I tell you. It's a gift that I love because it, it 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 protects me. Mm -hmm. But it's also a gift that I also hate because it can also hurt me because mm -hmm. I know it without you even telling me. Yeah. And along the the journey me and her been on for these past two years, like. Not only did I feel her, mm -hmm. I was feeling the ex. And it, it, it sound it might sound foreign to y'all, might sound weird to y'all. Y'all might twist and turn that which way but loose. No, because like it'll be days where I will literally wake up and I know that these are my feelings. Like I'm happy, I'm going throughout my day, but I feel the sadness of somebody else. And I know that this is my ex missing me or being sad. Like you know how um have y'all ever heard they say like before we incarnate um, on this planet that we actually sign like contracts with different people within our soul family to play out certain roles in this reality so that our soul can grow so we can learn certain lessons. What if it's something like that, like Lily Grams and or uh, B, maybe even shit, Avery or something like that, or like in a soul tribe, a soul family, they all sign a contract. Oh, let's play this out when we go on earth, you know, and uh, see if we can get your soul to go to this level, something like that. Like, have y'all ever heard of that? Comment below your thoughts on that. Brittany could literally feel those things. I can feel it. And I don't think people understand the extent of what we said. Like, when my ex went away and she had sex with Avery, I literally felt yes, when yes. they had sex. I felt it. It woke me up out of my sleep. Yes. I felt it. Same thing with my ex. When she used to go off and do her thing. I felt this woman have sex. Mm -hmm. I felt her climax. Yeah. <laughs> That's what y'all want to say. Yes, it's, it's not a good feeling. <laughs> no. I, I, I Sometimes I used to, back then, I used to pray to God, like, why the fuck you give me this gift? Mm -hmm. Like, I just hated it. But mm -hmm. it's a real thing. You know and so, being that we have sex, right, we created another soul time. So now we tapped into each other. Whatever she feels and whoever I feel it to yeah, and, and vice versa. If she going through something throughout her day, like, because she's a Scorpio, gosh, she don't like to tell nothing. No. I stop it. She don't like to tell nothing, but she gonna always know. No matter, I don't. Y'all know I don't have a good poker face. <laughs> yes, I like, and she hated to. Yes, she. Well, I still hanging in there. I gave him like six months to a year. He's still hanging up in that motherfucker. <laughs> because how cool. Okay, y'all, we had to put ice out. <laughs> okay, but we were talking about, um, you don't like the fact that I can feel you yes. and that I be knowing things. And I think it done prolonged a lot of the stuff with us be getting in a relationship. Yes. Because... Really can be secretive. And it's just like, I'm a, I'm the type of person, like, even when people come into my life, like, you be up front with me, I'm up front with you. Of course. And so, um, I'm, like, dead ass. Like, you get, I feel like you know you could tell me anything. Yes. And um, so when I feel like that's not happening. She know it's a problem. I know it's a problem, and then I start to shut down. And me shutting down. I don't like it. Yes. <laughs> so I'd rather just get it all out. Yeah. And but it takes her time. It does. But the question, the other question is, do I trust you? Yeah. Um, do you trust me after what happened? As far as, like, the whole situation, I mean, you still trust her because yeah. I knew. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the part where you know you told personal things, mm -hmm. I feel like me being that vulnerable with you with personal things has to be gained again. Mm -hmm. But overall, the trust still there. You know, you, yeah. I tell you things, you tell me things. So it's really, I ain't really completely broken. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so that answered that because you said, "How did you feel about the pillow talk between our so, eggs?" Yeah. yeah. Girl, somebody said, why did you choke me? Why did you choke Lily? I, I'm, you, I mean, it's just, it's just what 
Oh, with your that, and I y'all, I that. did not choke her. I came in. Yes, I bust in this fucking house, <laughs> but I didn't choke her. I grabbed the phone. Yeah. It was no, I've never put my hands on this woman. No. Ever. She grabbed the phone. Now, it could seem like she was Because she was on FaceTime. I'm laying down like this. Yeah. And so she come grab the phone. I'm trying to get away from her. I just so, grabbed the phone. And yeah. I, I'm a little tipsy. I often say that motherfucker know that. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, I grabbed the phone. I did not choke this woman. But okay. So, um, do you think you a rebound? Cause they swear up and down. I'm a rebound, Buki. Do you think you're a do rebound? You think, like, do I think I'm a rebound? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. No, I don't. Because it's just like in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I was there for a good time, not a long time. Like, I'm telling y'all, since the very beginning, I knew, I just knew that it wasn't over between them two. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I knew where to place her. Now, did y'all see us over the time doing what we doing? Mm -hmm. Yes, but y'all don't know our relationship. We talk about so many things. We're upfront with each other. I just wanted to Google what is a rebound. A rebound relationship means starting a new relationship before emotionally healing from a recent breakup. Some people may use rebounds to suppress their emotions, get revenge on their ex, or avoid feeling alone. It was a rebound. I feel like it was a rebound. Yeah. Like, even though she don't want to say that that is what it is, that's what it was. And actually, I think um, Lily has not necessarily admitted, but like I said, like in one of her videos, she said, like, she knew Gramps was going to act up when she came out with B. She also said she don't like being alone. She don't know how to be alone. So yeah. that helped her not have to worry about being alone. She wasn't emotionally healed from Gramps yet. Clearly. So this was a rebound. Yeah. It's like, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, like people want to take words and they want to put their own definition. But it's like it. when you do that, it doesn't allow you to kind of live truthfully. <laughs> Um, that's what I'm saying. And like really grow and do shadow work, all that type of shit. The the stuff you got to do, the uncomfortable things you got to do, even the things you have to admit to, to grow and he- truly heal. It's like, you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. It was a rebound and it's okay. We tell each other shit that I don't even want to hear. She don't even want to hear, really. but I feel she like if a... Yes. When she answered the question, Mm -hmm. she said, not really. So meaning part of her do feel like it It, was. That's why she didn't say yes or no. It was. And it's cool. (laughs) I've I've done rebound. I've got a rebound, girl. I've been a rebound. It's like it happens. It's just I've learned from that shit, though, which is what allows me to speak on this shit now. We tell each other shit that I don't even want to hear. She don't even want to hear. But I feel like if a person is being that honest with you and you being honest with that person, it is what it is. She done did her thing. I'm doing my thing. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Y'all know, I didn't know what a rebound was because I, I, I just always been in relationships, right? Same. And so I guess this is my first time having something where I'm like, no, I'm not automatically letting us have a title. We're not claiming each other like that. We're not I'm doing good. all the relationship stuff. So I guess that would be considered a rebound. But it's not a rebound because we're not in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I feel like rebound is like when you have... Look, she said, let's discuss it down below because she already know, like, people going to have something to say about it. And then, okay, so how do you feel when she say it was not a relationship? It's like, I almost feel like when you've been in a relationship for so long, once you deal with a person, another person, a new person, you almost don't know how to not let it behave like a relationship. Mm-hmm. So even though you didn't put the title on it, the behavior, the actions, the jealousy, all the emotions that can come with being in a relationship, it was there. So it was a relate. What the fuck is it? Maybe I'll look up relation. Let me let her talk while I do that. Have that like lovey oh, dovey. I see this crew face. Let me, yes. let me keep it. Let me lock it down. Let me put a title. It's a lot of titles now. I do feel like over time we saw different rebound things with both of us because both of us was getting out of a relationship when yes. we met. Yes. So 
I don't think that Brittany is a rebound because I, I put her in that because around the same time she was getting out of hers, I was getting out of mine. Yes. And mine's fucked me up as much yeah. as hers fucked her up just on different levels and different ways. So yeah. I don't think... I just feel like so even this definition, which is not good enough, but it says like, what is the real meaning of a relationship? And I'm thinking of romantic. A relationship is the way two or more people are connected or the way they behave towards each other. So it's not necessarily if you calling it or claiming it as a relationship, it's the way you're behaving towards each other. So if one person can't do what they want without another getting jealous. If y'all fucking, if y'all going out on dates, if y'all treat, it's like after a while, it's a romantic relationship. And I think the sooner that they can, uh, especially Lily, I'll say both, the sooner that they can go ahead and admit to it and be like, okay, this was a relationship. I'm jumping in and out of relationships. I just don't know how to, when I get out of a relationship, I don't know how to just be single and be alone then the, the the faster they can like move on from it and grow and heal from it. That's what I believe. But it's just really the way y'all behave towards each other, not the title y'all necessarily put on it. Rules place. And my stuff is just... But again, comment below your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree, comment below in the comment section. More public. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's literally it. It's because the motherfuckers is on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what and yeah. my stuff is just more public. That's, Hold on. As much yeah. as hers fucked up, just on different levels in different ways. So yeah. I don't think, I just feel like we was placed. And yeah. my stuff is just more public. That's it. <laughs> that's that, I mean, in the public, we're the ones that's deeming it a relationship. But if it was on the backside, it wouldn't be. But it would still be a rebound. I'm just even thinking about in my past, like where I wasn't on the internet and just certain things that like certain moments I had. Again, I was the type, I didn't know how to be alone. So even shit, even some of the shit I did, you can deem it as a relationship. It's just one girl who I claim up now. I do not like claiming her as my ex, but the way that we behave, <laughs> It was a fucking relationship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you saw, you told me the one I like. Yes. She was a sash too. But anyways, and she be calling me her my ex. I'm and like, you is. I told you. You her te ex. Technically. But you we are. But we never claimed it. Like, I never said, oh, that's my girlfriend. But the way we behaved, it's like, that's what it was given. <laughs> Shit. I mean, that's literally it. It's because the motherfuckers is on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so best away. and worst thing about the age difference. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all know this is my first time literally dating somebody younger than me. And I know this ain't nothing new for me. Girl, first of all, everybody I've always dated has always been older than me. And call it a childhood trauma, but I just I used to just like them that way because maybe you know, we can get deep with it. We can get deep with it, but I ain't gonna go there, you know. People be searching for what they didn't have in the day. You know what I'm saying? And not saying my dad wasn't in my life, but that's a long story. So, um, I feel like in my masculine, I like for them to show up in authority. I like for them to show up um, dominant. I like, because I'm very dominant, right? And if you, if I feel like you can't handle me. I'm going to motherfucking... Do, 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 do. We gonna... Right, she says, I'll walk all over your ass. I'm the same way, too, which is probably why Carla's so fucking spicy. I need them spicy, too. Yeah. We go... Gonna... But not toxic. Too sl you know, I'm a two-step on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm and so, I think for a minute, the age thing with Brittany kept making me feel like, oh, no, she got so much to learn. Oh, no. But then I started to see, like, she was mature in a lot of ways and that I was actually able to learn from her. But then there was definitely those things that I just like, oh, my gosh, she's 26. Oh, my gosh, she's 26. That's how I like me at 24. I met her, she was 24, <laughs> and I was 30. And so now I'm 32, and she's 26, and we're about to be 33. Y'all know the season here, but Scorpio gang around the corner. Please, yeah. please don't speak of that. Um, it's sweet, you want to run out of here, boy. Wait, please don't speak of that. <laughs> but I feel like um, 
You know, Brittany done taught me a lot. She's definitely teaching me a lot by myself. And I can definitely say that it has. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. It's been a challenge for me. The age thing is a big thing for me because I just feel like I know what I like and this, this, and this, and this is something new. It's different. It's out of my comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? And then I felt like at first, like, I was having to go over uh, things that I already went through. And that's only because I wasn't a lover boy. Like, yeah, I don't want to teach nobody. And it was, you know what? I kind of get where Lily coming from because before Carla, like I used to just typically date girls that were younger than me, not like too younger, like maybe two years. That's about the most I would go. But um, even some the same age, um, even when I messed with, she was two years older than me, but it just felt like within that age, I, because I was kind of, I was always more advanced than like my peers as far as like jobs, money, making money, all that stuff. I felt like I had to teach. Um, and I really got tired of just feeling like I had to teach, uh, the girls that I were messing with. So I decided to try older. One of them, she was just a little too old. So I was like, look, this is, you know, a good little experience. At least I know I can attract that. But then when I got with Carla, oh, she was just so advanced, more advanced than me. But um, I was even thinking with Carla, because, you know, it's an age gap with me and Carla. But I was just thinking, like, I don't know if I could ever date someone like 10 years younger than me, that type shit. Because especially in my age where I'm at right now, um, I just, I don't know, I wouldn't want to feel like I was going back. Because when you are in your 20s, it uh, for a lot of people, most people, it's a struggle because you're just trying to figure so much out. And I don't even know how you was patient with me. I think the reason why Carla was patient with me is because I was also introducing you to a new world, entrepreneurial type world. And like, let's get into this type shit, like shit that she wasn't even thinking about. So maybe that's what helped balance it out. No, I think, I mean, that was a positive. Mm -hmm. So don't get me wrong. It was just that you was on top of your stuff. Mm -hmm. Supposed to my ex who was still calling her mama to help her with her bills. And I had to tell her, why you calling your mama? Your mama don't live here. Man, I learned when I was a, a freshman in college and I asked her mama for $20 and she said she ain't got it. I knew from then, I was like, oh, I'm on my own for real, for real. Yeah. So then I knew from then I couldn't, you know, ask her for shit. But I still, I don't know. I just was like, man, I don't know how anybody could just date. Like me personally, you couldn't pay me to date somebody 10 years younger than me because I just don't want to deal with what you would have to deal with as far as like them figuring shit out. Yeah, I can. Even if they are established financially, it's still things you have to learn and figure out like friendships and, you know, just type of shit you got to deal with that I just wouldn't have the patience for. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, I. So... Fucking you good was a plus too, huh? I mean, that doesn't. That was a plus, but that's not what I look at. So to me, I'm not going to be sitting here just looking at your age. Not unless you're just completely immature. So then I'm going to be like, this ain't nobody I can talk to. But as long as you handling your business and you know how to maneuver out here in the world, it's like, I don't, I, first off, I didn't have to depend on you for shit. You see what I'm saying? So you was handling your own shit. So at the end of the day, either we was going to work or we wasn't going to work. It wasn't like I had, I was gambling on this. Cause like I said, like you said, we came into it both. Like I ain't trying to be in a relationship. It's just so happened. We both realized, you know, this is a cool person. Like they seem like they on top of their stuff. They seem like, you know, they're not about games. I think that's what we was both because no. we both had been in so many bad relationships where people were trying to play games and manipulate. Mm -hmm. So when we found each other and it was like, I ain't I'm did this I'm before. A, I'm a fucking tag. Yeah, it was like, I ain't <laughs> did this before. Now, is it some stuff that Nick taught me and I taught her? Yes. But like on the aspect of just looking at her like she was an age, like I never looked at her so like that. I think a lot of it too, I guess it depends on how that person behave and what they got going on. Yeah, but then it's like sometimes it can be mentally in people's head because that's what it almost sound like with Lily. How she like, oh, she 26, she 26, she 26. But is it something be doing or is it that she mentally in her head, she's used to dating older people? Maybe it was certain things that, B did that reminded her that she was 26. It could be certain things that I did because I think you met me when I was 26. It could have been certain things I did to remind you that I was 26. 
Mm, no, I never had that moment where I was just saying your age in my head. Yeah. Now, it's been times like when we was bickering, going back and forth, and I felt like this is so immature. You know, like, I don't want to be doing this. But never, like, as far as just moving in life. Mm -hmm. I've never had that moment because I really don't, I mean, not saying that I don't give a damn because I ain't going to date nobody that's too fucking young. But as long as you handling your stuff, that's good for me. And I think, like, what happened before you with my ex, like I said, she was just dropping the ball. Just, just dropping the ball with a lot of stuff, just... And even with her friends, like with friends stuff, I don't care about that because that ain't got nothing to do with me. But when your friends start to impact me, because remember, I did have a situation where she had a jealous friend. And I had to let her know, like, you can move how your friend wants you to move, but that's not my friend. I don't have to move like that. So it's like you even have to learn how to manip how to move when people have jealous friends, but you also have to make sure that they're not crossing your boundaries. Like you can have a jealous friend, but your jealous friend ain't gonna tell me what the fuck to do. If you want your friend to tell you what to do, that's cool. But I never dealt with that with you. Like all of your friends were so well, fucking you had cool. The one girl you had to go up on. She wasn't your friend when I first met you. Yeah. If you think about it, we both met her kind of at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think because she didn't know us, it was kind of one of them things where you get to know somebody and she tried me and I had to let oh, her yeah. know Carl, what it was. I don't mind going off on nobody. Boy. I showed on. It's like exercise damn. for her, boy. I if your back. grandma do something wrong, I'm going to let her ass know she did something wrong. Um, I don't, I don't care. Now. Don't if she did it. something wrong to me, I would. You don't have to let grandma get away with that. No, she, it, it depends on what it is. Oh, man. And you the know how she I am. To teach me. It <laughs> just seems like opening up the door, sending her flowers, and, you know, planning things. I never really had to do those things. You know what I'm saying? I never really came across a woman that required those things. So it's like, if I was. Is she saying a woman? That's what. It's, Okay. I was just trying to see, because I think she said like three times. Yeah. I'm like, is she saying a woman? Mm -hmm. Raised up on those things, and I never had a woman that required those things. Mm -hmm. Getting with a woman like her that required certain things, it was like, it was something new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> this might be a little challenge, but it is. No, but no, but no, because look, now she's talking about a love language. And like that she's not used to tending to. And I don't know if that necessarily got to do with age because again, mm -hmm, don't. I like being Carla, y'all, if y'all watch our vlog channel, we talked about a, a situation we had where we were not meeting each other's love language. Now my love language, physical touch and Carla like, okay, you want all this physical touch, all this pom pom and bum bum, but how I'm gonna give you this, all of this, and you ain't giving me my love language. And then, like, we had to kind of even understand that we were not even giving each other love. Like, and hers was acts of service. I've never had to put so much energy into, like, that type of love language. But uh, after the years of really putting in that energy, I know how to do it. Like, I don't even got to really think about it like that. But um, at first, that shit was so new to me. Like, I didn't know how to do that. And yeah. I wasn't no 26 either. Yeah, and a uh, love language can't. It can, um, it can definitely be a challenge. Um, sometimes people might just think it's easier for me to just date somebody with my same love language because you think it's going to come easy. Yes. But it's like you really do have to put in the work Earth's when it comes down to service that. and quality time. Yeah, because like when B was talking about the opening the door, like y'all... I don't even care about that. Like some people might think like acts of service, that's something that I care about. Like just because your person love language or something don't mean just because you do it that that's what's at the top of their list. Because they still might be like, I don't give a damn about yeah, that. Yeah, and like, let's also, let, can we just stop trying to guess our love language and just making shit up? Like, yes. when, like actually, there's an actual official free quiz that you can take online. Just Google uh, love language quiz. And yeah. it's like, it's I think it's like five official love languages. Acts of service, physical touch, 
quality time, stuff like this. It's like five of them, five or six. I don't know. Receiving and, gifts. Yeah, receiving gifts and uh, words of affirmation. Yeah. Um, And then you take the quiz, and it, you may think your love language is one thing, but you take the quiz and realize it's a whole different thing. That way you can understand like the things you like so you can continue to pour more into yourself and things that you may expect from your partner. And if you work with your partner, it's actually a different test for that because your love language can be different as far as on a work yeah level. so like just take the quiz stop <laughs> guessing stop making shit up <laughs> like how lily what she say hers was money or something like that's that. what graham said but, she said but i think what she may mean is like it may be gifts like she may like receiving gifts that could be what it is but if you don't know for sure, like, and I said she don't know, because she might know. She just may be like, look, I like money. Or she could be listening to all the city girls out here <laughs> thinking that but, that's how she's supposed but to yeah, be. But yeah, I say take the quiz, like, officially know your shit. Yeah, but I don't you think that's kind of hard when somebody don't really know themselves? Do you think it's easy for them to take a test like that? Yeah, because so, it asks you questions, and then you just... Just answer to the best of your ability as far as how you will behave in those scenarios that they provide. Mm. Yeah. It's, 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 it's easy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what I think I love about this particular situation, situation with her being older older than me because it's like, I'm, I'm getting older, so I need to learn certain things because I was used to them hood rats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but when you start asking for different things, God is going to give it to you whether you're ready or not. And that's something I've always told her, like, after my ex. So it was like, um, after my last relationship, I started asking for certain things in a, in a woman. And it was like, God sent her to me just like that. So it was just like, I know I was asking for women like this, but I knew I had a lot of work with myself I had to do. So it was just like getting with her, it kind of like sped it up a little bit. And this time she kind of like actually taught me mm -hmm. in like ways I actually wanted to learn and needed to learn at that time. Mm -hmm. So like, I think that um, even with you, like you have taught me a lot of ways that um, I would like someone to love me yes. you know and, and that's another thing like Brittany and I aren't allowed <laughs> to say the um, love word <laughs> because I take that very serious yes. so it's not like we just be like oh I love you I love you too I love yeah. you I love you too we know we love each other yeah. um, we say one four three yeah we say one four three and one four three two that's how we tell each other we, we love each other care about each other but I take love very, very serious. And I just feel like I've been in a, in a space in my life where I've been in long-term relationship after long-term yes. relationship. And I'm the opposite, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> like, my relationship, y'all have to understand, before this, I was in a six-year relationship, I was in a two-year relationship, and then this was 10 years, so it was just like, well, eight years, but 10 all together. So it was just like, that's a big portion of my life. And in the midst See, and that's even more proof that what like how they be like oh you go back to your ex just listening to her history all these long-term ass relationships okay obviously it was some going back breaking up going back but then you look at my history it's like a whole bunch of choppy ass relationship because it's like once you did something i didn't like i just left your ass so me and Brittany, I did not expect to be as connected to her as I was. Neither one of us. Neither one of us was. So it's like, this has just been very different for us. And, and you know, we going along with the flow. And it's some things that I feel like we both got to work on. And that's what she was saying. Like, we both got to. Yes. We both got work that needs to be done. So we ain't in no rush when it comes to that. But right. let's go to the next question before we have to end this. So last question, because I think this is what people want to know. So this is our last question, y'all. It says, if they had gotten back together, how would you have handled that? So I guess if me and my ex would have got back in a relationship... <laughs> How would you have handled this? <laughs> I wouldn't have gave a fuck for real. 
Because mm-hmm. it's just like, like I told y'all, it was bound to happen. You know what I'm saying? You can't compete with... I've been around for two years. You can't compete with 10 years. You know that. So it was just like, why would I set myself up to be mad for it? I just, like I said in the previous question, I just, I didn't want it to, if it was to happen, I wouldn't have wanted it to happen so fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just felt like, what did you feel like? What did, why, why wouldn't you have wanted it to happen so fast? Why was you so disappointed? Why was I so disappointed? It's because, like, I'm going to just be honest with y'all. <laughs> they was together for 10 years. You know what I'm saying? And we all know two years ago what was brought to the Internet and how it was brought to the Internet and certain things that were said on the Internet. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like it's levels to that shit, man. You been working with a female for 10 years. It's just certain shit you don't say, certain things you don't do or allow. And I just feel like for you to go be in a relationship with another person and y'all have an issue and you come apologize publicly on a YouTube channel to the motherfucker that you love your person for 10 years with. And she she apologized to her. I'm saying she apologized to Mm Avery and decided publicly, she apologized to her publicly, Mm -hmm. but decided to come to you and apologize to you behind closed doors. When she first told me that, I was just like, no. Mm -hmm. She needs to apologize to you publicly. She don't need to be doing all this pillow talking and... You know, when I I saw on the internet she apologized to another woman that she just met and y'all been y'all came up together. You know what I'm saying? Y'all did a lot of things together and she did that and I just felt like, yo, no. I, I, I didn't like I didn't like how it was starting. So I automatically Let me ask you this. <laughs> Do you feel like um that happened because maybe that's the standard that Avery had for herself or I wonder um like you know what I'm saying you know how they always say people treat you the way that you allow them to treat you right so I wonder if because when they first started talking Lily wasn't like you know some, you need to like don't apologize to me behind the scene you need to apologize to me like how she said when she told us, she said she told her you need to be just as loud as you was, the disrespect was. But maybe she said that after talking to B. So we all know, like, Avery, she almost carried herself like she was stuck up in a sense, you know? So I wonder if Graham's already knew she had to come correct with Avery because of how Avery carried herself. And maybe the disrespect that she had been doing to Lily. Lily allowed it to happen. So all these years, she always kind of just slid back in and maybe she felt like that was okay. So it could be that, but then I was also kind of leaning more to the side. I feel like Graham, she's very calculated in the things that she do. And then perhaps she was doing that in, as a form of a way of getting to Lily. Like, let me, as a way to getting her attention, making her feel some type of way, whatever it could be. I feel like it was for some type of reaction or some type of feeling that she wanted to put inside of Lily. What you mean, her? Like, okay, I know Lily would want me to apologize to her publicly, but I'm going to apologize to this girl that I barely even fucking know publicly before I do it to you. No. Make her feel some type of way. That's just what I think. Yeah, I was just thinking because what happened with her and Avery, you know, that's when Avery came out and said she talked about her teeth and all of that stuff. Um, but before Avery came out and said that, I guess... Grams had already did the apology on social media. And I'm thinking maybe that's because of, I don't think, I think they were seriously just going through something. And so she knew she had to come correct. But as far as like with Lily, it's like you, I feel like she do have to, you know, like maybe certain things that you used to accept, especially if it wasn't um, something positive. I do think that you have to teach people how to treat you but then also that's why it's important to kind of get to yourself and understand what it is that you like 
what it is that you expect from your next relationship so that you can know when that shit is showing up differently, you can be like, no, this is not what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just being like, I like them, but they they do this or they do have this positive. But thing. then also another thing too. Again, her doing certain things for herself. It could have been like, shit. I know I fucked up so bad in my last relationship and got embarrassed publicly. Let me show on this platform that I can apologize to somebody. It could even be something like that. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But I definitely see where you coming from. Yeah. Magley knew I didn't like how it was going to end. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like that was what you think you felt like you protecting me because a lot of people be like, well, you ain't got nothing to do with that. It ain't what you think. That you True think. enough. They business is they business, but this my friend. This my nigga. Mm-hmm. Any of my niggas know I'm going to rock with them. I, I'm going to have a back ten toes down with her. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was in protective mode. That's always been me. I'm always in protective mode. I'm. I don't. I don't take no fraud ass shit. I don't. I don't like phony shit. I don't like that. I don't. I don't like that internet shit that motherfuckers be doing. And not even just y'all situations. I don't. It's just certain shit I don't like. And it's like if you a real nigga, rock like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's just the whole situation was disappointing me. You know what I'm saying? Even when it came to her pillow talking, it was just like. You disappoint. You still disappointing me, bro. Yeah. But you know, people gotta learn certain lessons. You know what I'm saying? So I can't screw around, bro. Edit that out. But okay. it's just like you know, I'm really proud of you. Why you said it? I'm just really proud of your growth because we done been through a lot and everything ain't been cute. Everything ain't been rainbows and skittles and sexy. I know y'all like to think we sexy. Yeah. Everything ain't been sexy, but I just love when I see people doing the work and I see people trying mm-hmm. and a lot of times like during our situation like it's been times where Brittany ain't seen me doing the work she know it's in me she know God is covering me she know what she know who I am mm-hmm. like she sees me right and the work of God that flows through me yes. and along our journey you know I've been in a dark place I've been in uh, blocked places. I done been in, I done had all kind of ups and downs, okay? And <laughs> I feel like even then, when you with somebody, you know how y'all like to say on the internet, like somebody not practicing what they preach. Mm. Being on this positive journey, staying close to God, walking with God, and really like staying true to your mission takes work it takes strength it takes courage it takes being disciplined and sometimes when life hits you you really fall to flesh and i it's hard to get out of that and it's hard to get through that. And some days I was waking up, it was very hard to stay positive. Mm-hmm. It was very hard to not be negative. <laughs> it was very hard. It's like a battle every day trying to do that. Yes. It sucks. And then if you have somebody who's going through their own things as well, and you see them, and you try to tell them what to do, and they ain't going to want to listen to you because they see you going through your shit. You know what I'm saying? They're like, bitch, you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. I understand it, but what I can say is that the work is not going unnoticed. Yes. And I'm proud of you. And you've been through a whole lot in the last two years. I was just thinking uh, when I was talking about how, like, I wouldn't, like, when Lily was talking about she was giving her cousin or whoever, her family member, relationship advice. And it's like she's struggling with her own relationships and shit like that. And there were so many people just making excuses for that. I just didn't get it. And I was thinking, it's almost like, like let's say you see like a, a heavy person, like a, let's say, 300 pound, 400 pound person. And then it's almost like you sitting in their face and asking them, can you just tell me how I sh- what I should do to lose weight? And they sitting up there big as hell, 300, 400 pounds. Like, would you act, Would you honestly ask them how to lose weight? I told you, I didn't sign up for a gym membership because of that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's almost what it looks like when yeah. you try to ask someone who, 
is, who's not in a established or relationship, how to be successful in my relationship. That's just yeah. what it looks like. I just didn't understand that. But hey. I think we both have, we but <laughs> different levels, but we've been through some shit. Yes, and I appreciate you just being here for me, for God sending you in my life, for you even just being a friend. And even the times where I don't like your ass. Same here, girl. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, be I'm like, get away from me. I'm like, oh my God, why you saying, mother? What he saying? Yes. God, why did you bring it? To me, <laughs> it's like, yo, get out. Where it's like, no, bring her back. <laughs> so but I definitely get that. I just feel like life is all about lessons. Mm -hmm. And whether you like them or not, you got to go through them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that answered that question, the first question. That's we'll how we're going to end this. Because people was like, why you play with my girl like that? I don't think necessarily we've been playing with each other. Because people basically want to know, like, at the end of the day, why didn't I leave you alone? Yeah. Why didn't I set you free? But then it's like, well, shit, why she set me free? Why she leave me alone? You know what I'm saying? But at the end, we are connected, mm -hmm. and then we are following God's path. And I feel like when it comes, if that comes, if it's if we're supposed to not be in each other's environment anymore, that will happen. Did Lily hint that she was a uh... Uh, talking to somebody else or no? Well, that's what. Um, that's you know, what Discord, they at. just be putting little things in there. Yeah. That she may be talking to somebody else? Yeah. Oh, comment below. And so until then, we. We hear y'all. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it but is what it is. The last question. Is what? <laughs> I think I got a question. we going to answer it over. we go. going to. The last question is. Do you see yourself being with me in the future? <laughs> That's the last question. That's the last question. Do but, I see myself being with Brittany in the future? Hmm. But guess what? Y'all got to find that extra out <laughs> Over on my channel, over on Kicking It With B, make sure y'all go check my channel out and stay tuned for my first video of my mukbang featuring your girl, Lily Yours Truly. And y'all will get y'all answers plus more questions. <laughs> yeah. And more vulnerability. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. On this, on, what we're doing, we're being vulnerable with y'all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for being a part of Truthfully Podcast. Thank you today. for having me as a guest. You're welcome. <laughs> I really thank God for just allowing us to be open, to be vulnerable with you guys, yes. and for y'all to know my truth, mm -hmm. her my truth. truth. <laughs> and then y'all gonna believe some of the truth that's in between. Like, I and some of y'all gonna twist the turn and flip it. But yes, we don't care. We know our truth. We know what's yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? And the people that get it, gonna get it. Yeah. If you don't get it, it ain't for you to get. Yeah. But I appreciate y'all for having me on this channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to y'all on the next one. All right. So I think overall, um, it was good dialogue. It was it opened up um, an opportunity for me and you to have good conversation mm -hmm. about certain things. Um, I think it felt very mature. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, I think I said all my thoughts. It sounds like you got some other. Carla, they be saying Carla be holding back. Um, honey, if she holding back on some of this stuff, I hate to know what the hell really be going on in your little head. Mm. Sometimes but maybe it's for I the do. best. Um, because sometimes I feel like um, everybody ain't ready to hear what I have to say. So whether it be the audience, whether it be whoever might send Lily a clip or if Lily tiptoe over here and watch it, I just feel like everybody's not ready. And then sometimes it's not meant for me to say something right then and there. Y'all know I've brought stuff up from the past before. So yeah, it's like it is what it is. I try not to like dog walk her. But, um, and yeah. that's why it it's is. like a lot of times if I feel like it's going to be too much on the negative side, I just, I won't say anything. Yeah. And it's kind of like, um, when we do this reaction, that's kind of why we were on a hiatus. I mean, we handling things behind the scene too, 
but it's like in our life it's not toxic it's not drama it's peaceful i mean we just be chilling so when we do these type of that's why i'm trying to figure out a way to move over to the other like type of content for us to react to but we also got to give y'all what y'all want but when we react to these videos lily grams whoever we're reacting to they're not the only ones that's getting body slammed in the comments i mean me and carla we getting some of it too and it's kind of like all mm -hmm. right y'all getting on my fucking nerves because we still gonna react we still gonna share our opinion as far as how we feel but um it's stuff that comes with it and we understand that that's how the internet behaves so we just yeah. we want to take a little break yeah and um, then sometimes i just don't be ready i almost wasn't ready tonight I was enjoying my little drinky drink. But honey, the comments started to come through. They was like, where the fuck y'all at? Y'all need to at least post a video once a week or shit like that. And I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, but the thing is, people need to understand, you don't know what's going on in somebody's life, mm -hmm. where somebody is mentally. And even leaving a comment like that don't make me want to run and come and sit down and do but no it motherfucking video. But it was just video. so peaceful, like not doing the reactions. We were yeah. just doing our life. Yeah, it, it's because of the type of video it was. I was just like, I ain't ready to do that. Yeah, I even did the bowl. I was like, let me see if they want to see something else, baby. Yeah, I wanted to see this. I know. It was so many people <laughs> saying, I'm so over this shit. I just knew y'all wouldn't go vote for it, but y'all proved me wrong. <laughs> proved me motherfucking wrong. So here's the reaction. Uh, we want to thank y'all so much for tuning in. Hopefully next we can go and comment below if you made it this far. Comment below maybe something else y'all want to see us to react to. Maybe something a little bit more lighthearted um because we want to just get back to where we were like in the beginning when we had a lot of laughs and we was acting the fuck up so yeah. comment below that if you made this far but um anyways uh we hope to catch y'all next time thanks for tuning in peace, peace. you don't really need a lot of motivation you know what it is you know what it should be like you never need it there but don't be validation you live it in your truth only when you feel it that's why i'm doing it